Welcome to the tape library. I had originally said I wouldn't get another episode out this month, but I've received so many great real life ghost stories from you all over the last few weeks, I couldn't help myself. If you are fairly new to the channel, I'll just explain a little, as these episodes are a little different to my normal deep dives. Tonight I will be bringing you six real life experiences from listeners of the tape library. These stories are all read in their own words and represent encounters from multiple parts of the world. Usually I find these stories online and provide links to the original posts so you can learn more, but as these have all been directly sent in, if the people who submitted these stories want to answer any questions, please let yourselves be known in the comments below so people can speak to you directly if you want that. I know a number of them wish to remain anonymous, but I thought I would ask, just in case. Before we get started, I just need to ask that question again. Have you ever experienced something paranormal? If so, please just leave me at least a simple yes or no in the comments below. Or if you have a detailed story you'd like to maybe have featured in a future episode, you can find my email address in the description. Okay. That's enough talk. Get yourself a warm drink, dim the lights, and get comfortable. It's time to jump back into the world of the unexplained. Case 1 This was a horrifying experience that I can't explain. I love your videos, so I figured I'd send one of my weirder experiences in. I'm a skeptic, so this one has confused me for many years even though I'm the one who experienced it. When I was in middle school, about 10 years old, my friend had come over to hang out like he did most Saturdays. He was one of my best friends, and both of us were pretty observant of our surroundings, so whenever something weird came up, we would point it out to each other pretty quickly. At the time, my sister had this small, realistic baby doll that could walk on all fours on its own, if it had batteries. I never personally had taken much note of it, other than the fact I thought it was neat that it could blink if you tilted it the right way. One day when we entered the playroom of my house, we found the doll centred in the room. Again at the time we didn't think much of it, since I had seen it many times with no issue. I did have a glancing thought that it was weird it had been taken out when my sister hadn't played with it in years. Otherwise I just threw it hardly against the wall so that it would bank off into the nearby toy crate we had. My friend, who we will call Jay, tended to like to switch between playing outside and inside the house. So we went outside for a bit. Everything was fine and normal until we came back into the house. Jay stood stunned for a number of seconds when we entered the hallway, leading to the playroom. I quickly followed his eyes to see the electronic doll crawling down the hallway in a straight line towards us. It was made to do this as the toy's main function, but because of its age and rough play it sort of hobbled back and forth while approaching from the end of the hall. I looked at him and we both had the same immediate thought, that it was my sister. This had to be the case, because it wouldn't have been able to move using the old acid leaking AA batteries it had inside. We both walked forward and grabbed the doll, causing it to make the squeeze activated crying sound it makes. We called out for my sister, but with no response. Confused we looked all around the house for her. Turned out she was still asleep, and had been nowhere near the doll all day. I would like to note that my family is not the kind to prank each other, especially not with freaky things like dolls. With this, Jay and I started to get a little freaked out, so we put the doll carefully under a bunch of toys in the playroom, and left it. We didn't have any issues for the next few weeks of playing. One weekend, however, he and I were sitting at my family's dining room table. He was sitting across from me, 
Behind me was our living room, which had some couches and two giant bookcases. As I was talking with him, while he was taking a sip of his soda, he suddenly spit the drink all over the table. This was obviously surprising for me, especially because he was pretty calm in demeanour usually. I asked him what happened and he just silently pointed behind me. I turned to look around and froze when I saw that doll sitting on top of one of the giant bookshelves a good distance behind me facing us. We both sprinted to my mother who was outside at the time and asked her if she had put it up there. Note that neither me nor my friend could have ever reached the top where the doll was as the bookshelves were almost twice our full height. We were both horrified when she asked us what doll we were talking about. Now seeing as none of my family would prank us, and my father was not home ever, and my friend and I did not pull pranks on each other, we both started freaking out. There was something not right about this doll. We asked my mother to get it for us, after which we took it to our garbage cans way outside the front of the house on my family's farming property. For a number of weeks, that was the end of it. We started to forget about it. Until one morning, I woke up on a weekend without my friend being over. I had idly considered a couple of times if it had been Jay who put the doll in those spots. But this morning proved that theory false. I walked into the kitchen, which had a glass door to the front porch connected to it. I couldn't move when I saw it. Outside, stuck halfway down the walkway leading to the glass doors, was the doll. Positioned as though it had been crawling towards the door, with its face against the ground. I told my mother about everything Jay and I had experienced. She is a religious woman who isn't really scared of much, but dolls are something that she isn't super comfortable with, for some unspoken reason. She immediately went outside, took the doll and said she'd take care of it. I asked her later what she did with it, and she said she waited for it to dry since it had been rained on and soaked through to its mostly fabric centre, and then burned it tossing the plastic and electronic remains in the bin. We never had any more experiences with the doll, but I still wonder to this day what could have possibly done that if not for any of my family members, which circumstantially wouldn't have made sense at the time. Again, I am a sceptic, but that one is one that stumps me to this day. If you enjoy tales of the paranormal, the strange and the unexplained, then I would love it if you could become part of our growing community. Click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future episodes. I'm working on a big haunted house story for the next one, so I'd hate you to miss out on it. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can do that really easily just by clicking like. On to case two. I started working a new job that my best friend helped me get. He didn't tell me anything beforehand. We worked the overnight shift. Three days a week we'd get deliveries and had about six people working. The other days it was just three of us, sometimes even one during slow periods. The store had 16 aisles, with 14 to 16 being at the very back. My first day was a truck day. I was assigned to aisles 8 and 9 to work, being that I was new and those were easier. There was someone working in 10 right next to me. While I was working out the corner of my eye, I saw a black shadow or mass pass by really fast. I thought it was odd because the direction it headed was a dead end. Nothing there. I thought it was the other worker because he was wearing all black. After I finished what I was doing, I went to number 10. Saw him sitting on the floor working the bottom shelves. I asked if he had passed by a few minutes earlier and he said no. I walked to aisle 2 where my friend had been working. 
I told him what I'd seen, and he'd said he'd seen shadows too, but didn't want to tell me. Wanted me to experience them for myself, and then come to him. He told me he'd frequently see the shadow out of the corner of his eye. He'd turn to look and it would be gone. Fast forward a couple of months and some new people started working there. And they too would see the shadow moving and would come and tell us. We told them nothing beforehand so as not to put anything in their minds. One time it was me and another worker. My friend was off. At about 6am we were done with our duties and went to the front of the store to get ready to open and get relieved by the morning shift. We were discussing the strange things that we'd both experienced. The shadow figures, the footsteps, weird noises, when all of a sudden we heard a loud slap of a plastic bag and a loaf of bread came flying off the shelf a few feet from us. We looked at each other shocked, not fully believing what we had just seen and heard. We went over, picked up the bread, put it back, and tried to recreate how the bread could have fallen. We couldn't. We banged the side of the shelf, hit the bottom. Nothing. Then I slapped my hand on the bag, and it was the same sound we had heard. The bread was smacked with force off the shelf. Then the doorknob to the office behind us started rattling really fast out of nowhere. We were stunned in disbelief. It only lasted a few seconds before we heard the front doors. The morning manager had arrived. On another occasion shortly before midnight, a female cashier was walking in a hurry towards me. She stopped and asked if I had been knocking on the bathroom. I said no as she was coming from that direction and I was walking towards it so it would have been impossible for me. She asked where the other worker was. I said aisle 16, all the way in the back, and my friend was in the office where I'd just come from. She hurried past and next time I saw her she clocked out and left in a hurry. My friend later told me she went to the office and asked to see the camera by the bathroom from about 10 minutes earlier. He was an overnight manager so had access to the system. He rewinds it and tells me something strange happened. They see her going in the bathroom. Then weirdly, the screen cuts to static for about a minute. And then comes back when she's hurrying out of there. The minute that went blank was when she said she heard three loud bangs on the bathroom door. On another night we were having power issues. So all the lights in the store were dim, not bright like usual. There was three of us that night, and I was assigned to work on aisle 16, which I dreaded because of the poor lighting that night, and just the general creepy vibe for the back of the store. At around 2am my friend came to get me because we always took lunch at that time. While we talked for a bit, and while I cleaned up, from right next to us over in aisle 15, We heard rattling, and then a growl. Just remembering it gave me chills just now. We gasped, looked at each other's mouths wide open and ran. We ran past our other co-worker who asked what happened. We told him, and he said earlier in the night, while he was getting his things to work on aisle 12, he fell to the floor said it felt like he'd been pushed and that he heard a laugh. He didn't want to tell us because he thought we wouldn't believe him. The same reason we didn't want to tell him what we had just been through. All three of us went to the office to look at the camera in aisle 15. What we saw chilled us to the bone. Against the aisle shelves, we saw a shadow mass that looked like it was crawling sideways on the shelf like Spider-Man on the wall if you will we stayed together the entire night after that helping each other out with the work I'll make this the last incident for now because if not this email will never end the three of us were in the basement one night putting things away 
talking, laughing. The stairs to the basement were old and hard, and easy to hear someone coming. We were the only three in the store when all of a sudden our co-worker tells me and my friend to hush and points at the direction of the stairs. We all got quiet and listened. We heard heavy footsteps, almost like if someone was wearing boots coming slowly down the stairs. We were stunned, staring at each other in silence as the steps got closer stopping right before they hit the last step and we would be able to see who it was. We all walked over together and peeked around the bend. No one was there. I don't work there anymore from the people I know that still do. They've completely gotten rid of the overnight shift now. No one wanted to work it. Case 3 I have many stories from the apartments I've lived in, but I will tell you this one here. My grandmother was very special in the way of warning us when something was about to happen. I always listened to her tell me ghost stories from family members, but just found them amusing. I was skeptical but listened anyway. We lived in one apartment that had activity, but just shrugged it off. When we moved to a bigger apartment that my uncle owned, my grandmother and I was grabbing her yarn bags when she stopped immediately and looked uneasy. I asked her if she was okay when she told me there was something in the building that didn't want us there. Me being the skeptic I was, I just responded with, it's a little late now. I would go on to regret joking about this later. So it was right before Christmas of 1996, and in my mum's apartment when you walked in, if you sat in on her couch, you could see straight into her kitchen. She was watching her favourite movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And I was bored, so I was paying half attention to the TV, when suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, something looked as if it flew by her doorway. I looked, and as usual, just thought I was overly tired. Yet again, it went back the other way. I looked again and told myself I was being delusional. Once again, I see something in a doorway, this time telling myself I was not going to look. But just like a horror movie when you tell the actors not to go, they do. And I looked. There in her doorway was the outline of a man, but he was like a shadow. No features whatsoever, but I could see him clearly. Now this wasn't possible in my mind, but I couldn't look away. It seemed to last forever, but really must have only been two or three minutes. My brother asked me what I had seen when I realised I wasn't sure. My brother went into the kitchen with our dog and was looking around when our dog began growling, like a death growl, something he never did, but then quickly yelped as if he was hurt. He ran into our living room and hid under our couch. I never found out what that entity was, but we moved a week later. Recently I drove by that place, and it was being remodelled into an actual house, removing the walls that once made his apartments. And all I can wonder is, has he visited them? That night made me a true believer. Hope you're still comfortable. Let's get on to case four. My family moved into my childhood home when I was about two years old. My older sister at the time was five. The new house was a late 1800s building with sturdy stone walls, around 60 to 70 centimetres thick. Not that uncommon here in Germany. I sadly have no information about the people who built it or owned it. I just know about the guys my parents bought it from. I personally always was a bit of a skeptic, mostly since I have witnessed nothing as a child or during my teenage years. But my older sister did. 
One warm summer day, it was like late July to early August, we were both playing outside. At the edge of our garden were arranged huge piles of firewood in order to dry. All of them were about 1.8 meters high and at least 5 meters long. When we stopped playing for a bit, I was going inside to get something to drink. She stayed outside and wandered around the firewood. When I came back, she looked kind of confused and a bit scared too, so I asked her what happened. She said that the moment I was gone, she saw a head peeking up behind the piles of wood and moving along. She first thought it was our dad's, sneaking around and trying to scare her. So she also tiptoed along the front side and expected to meet him at the end of the wood pile. Yet when she reached the end and peeked around the corner, nobody was there. But she stated at that moment she felt unbelievably cold. In the middle of summer with temperatures well over 30 degrees. Our dad was inside the kitchen the entire time with me and my mum at this time. And our garden was closed off by a large fence. So nobody was able to sneak in or out. Also the fact we lived in a small village, with that part of the garden facing an open field, made it pretty much impossible for anyone to hide. This was pretty much her first big paranormal encounter. Over the years she experienced similar things. Seeing people who weren't there, hearing scratching at night or the creaking of floorboards, like someone was walking around. As I said, I didn't really believe in the paranormal at the time so I didn't give it all that much attention since I heard or saw nothing. My mother on the other hand did, especially at night. Since our dad worked pretty much always the night shift, we were often alone during the night, which really wasn't a big deal. We had a family dog, a German Shepherd, who would defend all of us with her life, so we felt safe enough, especially since, as I said, we lived in a very small village. But like 20 years later, my mother told me of some of the experiences she had, with one in particular standing out to me. One night she was woken up rather unpleasantly by our dog barking at some random animal, like a rabbit or a hedgehog she assumed. This happened sometimes, and since she had a light sleep, this wasn't really too uncommon. Already awake, she wanted to drink a glass of water and got ready to get out of bed when, as she described it to me, a black shadow was creeping into the master bedroom from the hallway. She said it first looked like a dark shadow, but then started to lift itself from the wall and floor and floated in the middle of the room, approaching her fast. It was hovering in the air, like the silhouette of a big stingray with a featureless head in the middle of the black mass his body was made out of. It reached out to her with those fin-like parts of his body. Scared and frozen in place, she was unable to do anything. But when it should have reached her, the apparition vanished into thin air. She said in shock she remained in a half-sitting position for several minutes before crawling back under the blankets. She had no glass of water that night. Now to my first encounter, which to be honest wasn't too bad, but still chilling. My grandmother passed away in 2021, so my entire family gathered. After the funeral we sat together in my childhood home, talking. After a few hours, the phone started to ring violently. It was one of those cordless phones standing in a base station. It was not a normal ring, but many rings in fast succession. Something I'd never heard before. My mum took it out of the station, took the call, and there was only static noise. There was also no incoming call registered. Kind of weird. The same night I could feel the blanket getting pulled off bit by bit off my shoulder and following that with a warm hand laying on it 
I knew I was alone in the room. The door was closed. But I didn't feel scared or anxious. It was really nice. And from the bottom of my heart, I know it was my grandmother saying her final goodbye. Similar things have happened to pretty much all her closest family members. That day I finally turned and became a believer. Case number five. And this person has experienced two places in their lives that gave them similar events. So my family has some property out in the middle of nowhere, basically. On the property, we have a very old cabin. Very old. It's been there for two generations at least. The story we were told was that the people who lived there were the local indigenous chief's daughter, who was banished from her tribe for marrying a white man, which was extremely frowned upon at that time. It was said that the chief felt bad about having to banish his daughter, so he gave her and her husband land just outside of their village. I believed her husband died somehow, I think, if I'm remembering right. And the story was that she was heartbroken and lonely and cursed the home after they refused to let her back into their tribe after he passed. Now, I'm not a believer in curses and as much as I always loved the story, I didn't put any stock in the old tale my grandparents told me. The cabin, however, I have never liked. I'm over 40 now and a family member asked me when we were having my wedding at the property, if I would go in there alone or let my children go in there. And I replied, there's no way in hell I'm ever stepping foot in that fucking place again or letting them go in. I'm far from the only family member who feels that way too. My whole life the cabin has felt dark and strange, no matter what time you go in it. I've heard others describe a feeling of heaviness, and that's a good way to describe it. A dark, eerie heaviness. Even on the brightest sunny days it felt that way. There was always tons of dead flies around the windows and old antique furniture everywhere. I'm uncomfortable from the second I step through the old screen door. There's never been an obvious reason for it so I put it down to having an overactive imagination. So when I was in my twenties, my girlfriend and I went up to the property during the summer holidays. There was a lot of people there, and though there were several trailers, campers and motorhomes, sleeping areas were limited. So I decided to stop being a baby and get over the fear of the cabin. I walked in with our bags and threw them on the couch in the bedroom and made my bed on one of the beds, and my friend made hers on the other. We spent the night having fun, chatting and roasting marshmallows around the fire. And then when it was fairly late, we went into the cabin to go to bed. My friend is hilarious, and we always laugh a ridiculous amount when we are together, so we weren't tense or anything. We laid on our beds and we were still chatting and laughing, when we heard some noises, and my friend got freaked out. I explained that it's an old cabin and there's bound to be mice, but just to ignore them. My friend lasted on her bed for about two more rounds of scratching noises, and then she jumped over to mine. I was okay with that because I was still a bit uncomfortable in the cabin. We laid in the room listening for the sounds again, so I could explain exactly what we were hearing, as I'm used to mice being in some of the areas around there. We heard scratching again and I told her it was just the mice looking for food, which seemed to calm her a tiny bit. Suddenly, we started hearing thumping in the walls and in the living room. There's a bathroom and a little hall in between the bedroom and the living room. It's by far the creepiest area in the cabin. I can't explain why. My friend was so frightened that I said I'd turn out the light in the bedroom so we could hopefully see or figure out what was making the noise, hoping to avoid accidentally stepping on a cute little mouse. I hopped from the bed to the couch which was right beside the door and the light switch. 
I quickly found and flicked on the light switch. As I did, the both of us quickly searched the room for any signs of, well, anything really. We couldn't see anything. I told her that it probably was just mice and they scurried away when I jumped. I flicked the light switch off and waited to hear any sound so I could quickly flick the light on and catch it. It was only a couple of seconds when we heard a thump in the room and a crash in the living room. So I flipped on the light and laughed when again, we couldn't see anything. I stepped off the couch and my bag went flying from the couch across the floor. My girlfriend screamed and I said fuck this as I grabbed her to run out. As we ran past the bathroom into the living room, I saw all the old antique furniture was flipped upside down and looked like someone had tossed everything across the room. I didn't mention it to my friend, we ran into the kitchen to the screen door and suddenly it occurred to me that maybe my uncles had played a prank on me, as they so loved to do. As we neared the screen door I realised the hook was still latched and there was no other way in. The door beyond it was also locked still. So we ran into my parents' fifth wheel trailer and explained what happened. My dad walked back with me to the cabin to look at the furniture and everything was back in place. I can't explain it, I don't know what it was or why it happened. I don't know if they believed me or if any of my family believes me, except my brother, who feels the same about the cabin, but I don't care. My friend Jamie knows what happened, and so do I, and I will never go back into the cabin. We talked about it once years later. She looked at me and asked, Did you see all the furniture was all over the place? I can't decide if it's comforting knowing she saw it too. Now we moved to a rural area in a small town. The house is old and we hadn't been here long when stuff started happening. One of the first nights we had only had a few of our pots and pans unpacked for cooking so far because we were renovating. So we had washed the one we had used by hand and put it on a drying mat on the counter. I heard a loud noise in the middle of the night and heard nothing after. I got my husband to check but he couldn't see anything. When I got up in the morning I saw the pot on the floor with a huge dent in it. I'm honestly not sure how it could have fallen off the counter. There's not an eerie presence or anything so I didn't think anything of it really. I had several other experiences after that though. One day around 11am I was sitting on my bed with my cat reading. All of a sudden my cat, who I had never heard do anything but meow, sat up, looked at the bedroom door and started growling and then hissing. I couldn't see anything, I couldn't hear anything, it was just weird. About six months later I was lying in bed at night with my dog, a golden retriever named Ryan Reynolds. Yes, that's actually his name. Again reading trying to make myself relax enough to fall asleep. I was at home with my kids and my husband had to work out of town. So while it's a small community with great people who look out for you, I still felt a bit anxious. Anyways, I was about to finish my chapter and go to sleep when suddenly I heard someone running down the hallway. Ryan Reynolds jumped up and looked up at me. I have a child with autism and some health issues who talks in his sleep, so I figured walking might be his next play, though running isn't usually his favourite thing to do. I assumed it was him and worried that he was going to try to leave the house, so I got out of bed and called his name, but there was no answer. I walked past their room and saw both kids asleep in bed, no sign that they had ever even moved. They were both in that deep sleep sprawl across their beds. The dog ran into the living room, but there was nothing. Now this one I'm not sure how to describe or explain. Again I was lying in bed at night and I could hear a weird thumping. It's crazy to say, but it 
sounded like a heartbeat. It wasn't super loud, but you could definitely hear it. I woke my husband up and asked him if he heard it. He said he did, and he's a huge skeptic of everything. I asked him what it was, but he couldn't figure it out. We checked, and it was louder in the spare room, beside my kids' room. It got louder the closer you got to the shared wall. The weirdest part is there was absolutely zero sound in their room. Nothing. Then there was a weird sound that almost sounded like breathing. Like the house was breathing in and out. We couldn't locate where it was coming from or what it could be. My husband went back to sleep and I sat in bed hearing this weird heartbeat with breathing noises. It was a mild night with no wind and we haven't heard it again. My neighbours told me that their friend that lived here passed away years ago after getting cancer. She sounded like a fun person, so now when I'm alone I chat to her and ask her if she could start helping out with the housekeeping instead of moving stuff or flickering lights. It would be way better. Wishful thinking on my part. My son refuses to be alone in the living room by himself. He says someone is watching him. He said they don't seem mean, but he just doesn't like it. I guess time will tell if it's just our mind playing tricks. Or not. I have one last entry for you tonight. This person actually had quite a few short encounters. But the reason why I wanted to include a handful of them is because they are that rare thing on this channel. A ghost story that feels positive and comforting, rather than necessarily terrifying. Don't forget if you are new here, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And click like to let me know if you enjoy these more laid back style of videos. I really enjoy reading all your stories, so they give me a good chance to do just that. Okay, case six. I feel like everybody has spooky ghost stories, but not everybody has chill ghost stories. Well, I do. The first. My grandma had a friend that lived right across the street from her for the longest time until the woman died. We used to go over to see her and help her with her household chores all the time because she was independent, but her family lived far away so she needed help with a bit of heavy lifting occasionally. Just for context, this woman was Irish and lived to prank. She'd hide around her house and sneak up on us. She moved almost as silently as the wind itself, and she'd pinch us from behind and shout things like, Hey, boyo. And as always happens, eventually my grandmother's friend passed, and we went to pay our respects. I remember standing in line and waiting to greet the family at the wake and offer our condolences. While we were waiting in line, someone pinched me from behind and whispered, Hey boyo. I jumped back a bit and luckily no one really saw me. But for the longest time I was convinced the old woman was just pulling a prank. In hindsight, I think, she was just saying goodbye. Years after her friend passed, eventually the time came for my grandmother's crossover. Nothing really happened around the time of her passing, so those details aren't important. What is important is that my grandfather was never the same, and decades later he finally went to join her. While we were doing a final sweep of the house before letting one of the family members move in, I went back into my grandmother's bedroom. When I opened the door, I felt a sudden warmth and saw the briefest flicker of golden light in the corner of my periphery. I think she had come back to collect my granddad. A few months after that, my own mum passed. Hers was more sudden than the other three, so it took some getting used to. When my sister came to help me sort through her things, she brought my nephew and a little girl. After we had gone through boxes and were saying goodbye, 
I had opened the back door to let the cold October air into the house. Out of nowhere, the girl points behind me and asks, Who's that lady waving? We look to where she's pointing, expecting to see maybe a neighbour walking a dog or something. But there was no one there. Then the girl asks, Is that your Shishi? Which is what my nephew called my mother at the time, because he was still learning words. And of course, the boy gets excited and says, Yeah. All the adults just looked at each other and stayed silent. I like to imagine that was my mum sticking around to see my nephew one last time before she left. That's all for this entry into the tape library. I'm deep into research into the next one. It's a story that shares more than a few similarities to the Smell family haunting and might end up being quite a long one. But I'll get that to you all as soon as I can. Again, I love to hear all of your experiences. So if you have one, leave me a comment or drop me an email. Thank you for joining me tonight. Until next time, pleasant dreams.